Do you know what it is? Today's a day where I actually am not standing for f***ing disrespect no more. So I found myself a second job, but guess what? I f***ing quit. Third day in and I'm done with it already. I quit. Because who the f*** people think they're speaking to? F***ing job. You lot think you can't be walking up and down? F*** like that fam. The UK is going to make me go to prison. Mothers, I started deep in. I'm going to go jail. I promise. Listen to what I tell you lot. If I stay in this country, I know I'm going to go to prison. So I need to get this country before somebody me and I have to do something I don't want to do and I'm going to end up in handcuffs and go to prison. As you lot can tell, this is a story time, and you would have seen the preview before the story time. I'm going to get into it. We're going to talk about why it went from here to here. And I say here to here because things went left. I'm going to get into that. So this is based on a job that I previously did and had to leave. And for those reasons, we're going to explain those reasons. So let's get straight into it. So this job that I did was a leaflet distributing, nothing major. This job was literally just to do, like, just a little side job, just to make a little extra income, because I already had a job before that as well. So I worked two jobs, kind of thing, you know what I'm saying? So I was doing it. Um, I even got the receipts as well. One thing in me, I always had my receipts. Um, Conversation with the manager, we spoke on the phone, explained the role to me and all of that. And like I said, I already have done this before. Um... Like when I was like 16 or whatever. And yeah, decided to come across it again and do it again. Because I know, I know what it's like and it's just, you know, quick and simple money. So I did it for that reason. And when he explained it to me, it seemed all right. You know, like I said, I've already got knowledge of doing it and straightforward. Um, one of the things he did explain to me is how it works is... Um, when you meet one of the people who have the leaflets, they will send out a text message to your farm with their name and their contact number, and you have to be there before 8 p.m. And then you, when you reach there, you contact them to let them know you're there, kind of thing. So once that was explained to me, it kind of made more sense as well. So I did that on the first day. Now I remember one thing of me on the first day, I always try to be as early as I can. Even if I'm going to be late any other day, at least to make sure that the first day that I'm there on time. So I got there within great timing, I had a lot of time on my hands. I called the guy, the number that I was sent to call, to let him know I'm there. And one of the first things he mentioned was that how he'll be there late due to having issues with his car. Now, I get things happen in day-to-day -day life. People have things that happen unexpectedly people are busy or whatever whatever but to me it was just like a first red flag and considering my previous experiences in my last jobs which i will also speak on um there are certain things that i do look at as red flags and i feel like one of them is time management i feel like if you are a manager or you're an employer or any of those kind of things and you are lacking time management that's a problem because you're expecting the employees to be on time. And when we are on time, we're waiting around. Meanwhile, you're doing God knows what. That's the way I look at it. And it shouldn't really be a thing like that. So that was my first red flag. I'm waiting around. And he said that. And now, usually, on one thing of me, I have a very low tolerance and a lack of patience. But because it's the first day, I said, let me just keep my cool, go with the flow. And if it's a continuous thing, then that's your cue to leave because I'm not taking certain things in life because of the things I've been through. My spirit does not allow me to do that anymore. So for the first day, I'm just going to let it slide. About an hour, if not an hour, at least two hours, no more than two hours, I would have just been standing around, waiting around, 
outside the train station for this guy to arrive. So I also cannot stay still and stand in one place for too long. So I'm walking up and down to the point I'm able to sit at McDonald's, got bored of doing that, just walking up and down kind of thing, because I had nothing else better doing. And then now, as I've gone for like maybe the 10th time of getting up, walking up and down, I'm seeing his number calling me, saying he's here. And he's not even where I was told to meet. I'd have to, cr- I had to cross over the high street and meet him on another road. And then he's there, there's a group of people there, and then he's he's unpacking his car, like, nothing happened. No apologies of why he's late or not, not even just no apology, nothing like that. Or, I'm sorry I'm late, or this happened, that happened. You just casually open up your boot, your little Toyota, unloading the fucking leaflets. But I thought, OK, cool. Like I said, I'm just letting things slide. I'm not going to say anything because I know when I say things, it will lead to problems. So that's why sometimes I have to shut my mouth, and that's what it was... First day, whatever, he's here now. That's how it looks like. He's here now. Brushed it off and just let's hope for the best and get on with it. Um, so, yeah, he's explaining it. And I'm assuming some people... <coughs> sorry. <coughs> I'm assuming some people were already doing it prior or know about it already. Um, and one thing, I have to work in pairs. Now, one thing with me, I don't really have much of an issue with working with people, but I kind of do because I'm not a people's person in these days because people are very weird and just not here for it and just everything that happened in the past i'm just not here for it but in the working place if i if as long as you're someone i can work with then there should be no problem kind of thing but i find it hard working people because of how they are so the guy i was working with he seemed cool and the areas that we went to to do the leaflet in were areas i was familiar with pretty much near enough to where i actually live so i had no issue with the area or anything like that you know, first day. That's the first day. The first day went all right. The only one downfall I had to say for, I will say day one and day two, is losing the person I'm with in terms of I'll get told to do, say, one side and he'll get told to do that side or he will say, we will negotiate what side to do kind of thing and then I'll come back and then I won't see where he is kind of thing or I'll do one road, he'll do another road sometimes, but then we end up finding each other in the end anyway. Another thing I will add as well is that with this job, we had trackers. So um, whoever it was with the leaflets, that would give us the leaflets, they'd give us a tracker as well. So as I was saying, whoever it was with the leaflets would give us a tracker before we started. And sometimes within that, whilst delivering the leaflets, they would just check to see how much you've done. And they'll decide whether to give us more or just to let us continue until we've got through got through most of what we had before giving more, if that makes sense. So that's the first day. The first day was fine. My first red flag, like I said, was the fact that I had to wait over two hours. I'm told, to me, the way I looked at it is that it doesn't make sense how I'm being told to be there before eight o'clock. And then when I come there before that time... I'm having to wait over two hours. So to me, it's just like a lack of not only time on this man, but also unprofessionalism. Yeah, cool. His car might have broke up or whatever, whatever. But looking at the car you had, I'm not surprised. But that's not what this is about. Moving on swiftly. Day two now. So we summarise day one. We're going to summarise day two. So day two. Um, Similar thing. Same thing again. Um, The location that was sent to me or the meet-up place, I should say, was again local, one bus. And I had a lot of time on my hands as well, so I killed a bit of time before actually making my ways to the location. Got there now, and again, the same thing. It's past 8 o'clock, waiting around. 8.30, still waiting around. 9 o'clock, still waiting around. To the point I said, let me go into Sainsbury's to kill time and get myself some stuff, because I'm just standing here. And again, as I said, I cannot stand for too long I, I get very impatient and like i said if it was down to me and not having that patience i would just gone home and quit from then because i don't wait around that i'm not liking this i'm not going to do no job where i've got to be signed up waiting forever it's it's just not how it's going to run but i said okay let me go into sainsbury's let me get myself stuff plus we don't get lunch breaks either let me add that in we don't get no lunch breaks the first day I had to, I gave myself a lunch break because you're not going to have me here walking up and down i guess it's my it's part of the job that i need to do but 
when and where we get a lunch break. So I must wait until we finish to get one. I don't think that's fair, personally. We should get one, at least a 10-minute one. So that's what I said, let me get myself from now. Because I know they don't do lunch breaks and I shouldn't have to ask for one, to be honest. Anyway, time has gone by. Again, I think it was about two hours I had to wait again. And that time I said, you know what, I'm really this close to just going home. Because now I'm seeing that this is how they are, kind of thing. Because from the first day, if I'm able to pick this up from the first day, that just tells me that this is how they are. But that doesn't mean it's acceptable, kind of thing. So again, now everyone's decided to come... Again, no apologising, no no communication or anything or an accountability, any of that. Everyone just comes like it's just a normal thing to just rock up late. And same thing, day two was fine as well. Despite that, that's the only problem. But I'm just I'm just a person as well who will see things, observe and say absolutely nothing. And that's what it was. Day two was fine, uh, same thing, kind of thing, partners up again, whatever, whatever, moving on. Day three, day three is where things turned to a very sharp corner, where things really went left. Again, a local area from me, this one's even closer, and I'm not saying that because it's, it's sketchy or anything like that, the fact that it's getting closer and closer, that works better for me, if it's closer to me then shit, that works better for me. Um, met up now, and this time I said to myself, I'm not gonna leave out mad early because now I'm seeing that it's a pattern that people just rock up anytime they feel like it, even though there's meant to be a designated time to meet up for. I'm just gonna leave out a little bit later, and as I said, it's closer, it's walking distance. So I left out, waited around, and then I seen people come like maybe a couple minutes after, maybe twenty minutes after. So I thought, hmm, okay, better than the other two times, having to wait over two hours. The guys come. And then I also heard as well on that same day, there's a shortage of, a shortage of people. Some people didn't turn up. And then I got partnered up with this person. Now, this dusty, old, retired-ass man, yeah... <laughs> I need a moment of composed myself... You know what it was from the first thing I thought? I, I Like I said, I don't know him from nowhere. He doesn't know me from nowhere. But the first impression I had is that he looks like a guy who just talks bare, that waffles. You know them them people who talk to you so much and then they'll say things like, oh, I'll let you go, I'll let you go on your day. And they talk to you for another 45 minutes. He looks like one of them type of guys. That's the first thing I thought. So I was just hoping in my head that you just don't talk to me because... I'm sticking my earphones in and I'm doing what I need to do. I'm not here to make conversation. I'm not here to make friends, companionships, none of that. That was my thing. So he was telling me he's not really familiar with the area and I told him that I kind of am. That is where we was, because we have a map as well that we give him and we'll have different location points. So we'll have the highlighted ones, which are the most important ones, as they say. And then you have all the other roads and stuff. And all the roads that was on that map, I was familiar with, and I know the roads and the names. So that was that. I was directing them to where we need to go. And then we came up with who stays on what side. So before we started, he said he was stay on the left side and then for me to stay on the right. And it just stays like that. It's all like crossing over because that's what I think that some people did as well. They would cross over. They would stay on one side and then the other side, but then they end up crossing over. We stayed on those sides cool that got out of the way did that and then working our way around and then i see the guy with the leaflets because i remember i said they track your location and can say you are so he's come to the location and he stopped me he's giving me more leaflets which to me didn't make sense because we not long was doing it probably less than an hour and you're already giving me more leaflets to me it's just like why give me more have we just started kind of thing he asked me where the other guy was because when he had approached me, he didn't see me with the other guy. And I said to him, oh, I'm not sure. I think he's going on the other road. Because he told me he's going to go on the other road, but I didn't know where he went. So he's giving me more. And then he went by his business, or went by mine. So we're going up now. We're going up. And it's for a while I couldn't see the other guy. But I just kept continuing. 
And all I know is time's going by, I'm getting hungry. And as I said, we don't get no lunch breaks. So I was sat, I was remember I was contemplating if I should run to Sainsbury's and get something to eat because I was hungry. But before I did that, I went to go look for the guy. Couldn't see him anywhere. So I said, you know what? Let me go around Sainsbury's quick. And one thing I'll add as well, sometimes if they feel like you're taking too long, um, the manager will message you saying that you need to pick up your pace kind of thing. I remember that much, but I didn't get no message. So clearly it was a sign to go and get food. So I went to go and get food. Um, went to Sainsbury's, got out, got, come back, ate what I ate. And I basically walked back on that same road and then I ended up seeing him. And then now we're walking down, and this is where the problem occurs. So walking down now, we come off from where we was to come on a different, completely different road. I remember we crossed over, and he was was on the same side. He said he's going to cross over to that side, and I go down this road, and I stay to whatever side, as I did. So we're on different, separate roads now. I've done what I need to do, and I didn't see him nowhere. So one thing I will, that will happen sometimes is that if you don't, if I personally don't see the person come back, then I will just do the other side so that we can just move forward and just do whatever we need to do. Me personally, I feel like it's kind of not even common sense, but it just makes the job quicker. But clearly, I was wrong. So before that happened, now before things kicked off, the guy the leaflets has come now, and he's come to complain at me, talking about how I'm being too slow, da 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 da, da just just criticizing me. And it made me fall up away because it's like you gave me bare leaflets at the start when you didn't even need to. And I'm not even trying to make excuses, but also think of it as like it's hot. You don't want me to travel up and down in this fucking hot heat with my bag full of leaflets. I come a turtle with a shell on its back. And then you come in here to overload me with more leaflets. Like you didn't just give me bare at the start. Do you know what I'm saying? Like it's part of the job, I understand. But trying to move very quick when it's very hot. Because them times it was mad hot as well. So it's like, come on now, we've got to, you know what I'm saying? It just made me feel a type of way, you just can't let me like that. Like, if you want to switch, then we can. If you want to come out here and do this, then you then you can do that. And then you'll also get to understand why I'm moving the pace I was moving at. And then on top of that, the manager had called me. I feel like anybody that I encountered in that working place, he was the only considerate one. And you don't get a lot of considerate managers. Because he called me saying the same thing. He wasn't rude about it or anything like that. He wasn't trying to criticise me. And then he was just like asking me if I was hydrated, if I was all right. And who's in the background talking shit? That dusty old gremlin in the background. That dusty beanbag coffee bean looking ass gremlin. That dusty ass retired ass needs to be in a cemetery home ass grandpa pa 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 in the background. Now, I don't remember anything he said. The only two things I remember and is one thing I learned from English language and literature is to always highlight the key points. He said, waste of time and fuck you. For when I heard fuck you. And before I even get into it more, before that, before that, I missed that. But after I've been criticised by the guy with the leaflets, he's come now, he's talking about, oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? And I explained to him, as I just said, I don't the other side because you wasn't here and you couldn't move on quicker. You know? Using my brain that some people don't clearly have fucking have or use. And he's come now. And I just said to, my, to myself in my head, he has one more time to talk to me like that and there's going to be a problem. That's all I remember saying. I didn't say it to no one. I didn't say it to anyone else. I just said it to myself in my head. He's got one more time. Because one thing in me, I come from a certain place where I no longer take disrespect or anything like that. You talk to me like that, we're going to have a serious problem. Doesn't matter who you are, what you are, any of like that. That's what I remember saying to myself. So... That happened, and that just gave me more reason to just be in a, in a pissed. That gave me more reason to be in a pissed off mood. So by this time, my energy's off and it's changed, and I'm not really here for this no more. So that happened, and as I said, the managers now called me after that. So to me, it's like, oh my days. So to me, I'm looking at it as like the guys criticizing me about my pace. Then this dusty old man's coming here trying to give me verbal. And then now the manager's calling me, trying to get on me. It's just like, I feel like it was just me against the world at that moment. That's just how I feel. I'm also a very sensitive person as well, which doesn't help the situation. But as I said, he was actually being on a calm thing compared to everybody else. That's one thing in the working place as well. If you can't talk to people with respect, then I don't want to be there. And I can't be there. Because if I do the same thing back to you, you're going to be in hospital. 
Anyway, not the point I'm making. So he's come now saying all that, and I told them I'm fine and whatnot. And as I said, the old frogs in the background talking nonsense. And as I said, the two things he said. So from there, now I'm just seeing red. I'm not even hearing what the man just saying. I've switched off. I'm just ready to hang up this phone, and 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 I'm ready to rumble, kind of thing. So I'm I'm just here mad. I'm I'm livid. I'm not even hearing what he's saying no more. And I don't remember, because as I said, all I saw was red. I think I was still on the phone to him at that time. But all I remember is where, whether the conversation was done, whether I hung up on him or not, I said I'm not doing this no more. From when I heard him say that and he walked off as well, I was done. So what I did is I had the track cards, I said, and the leaflets in my hand. I think I might have hung up on him, I don't remember. All I remember is I left the track card somewhere and I dashed all the leaflets on the floor. As you've, seen, as you've seen in the video, I dashed them all on the floor because I thought, there is no way you're going to speak to me like this and then when I come off the phone to this manager, I'm just going to continue like nothing happened. In all fairness, he's not going to beat his ass. He's not going to beat his ass because the way you spoke to me, you can never speak to me like that in real life. You can't. But it's only because the manager was speaking to me and, and I didn't follow through with it until after why I didn't. I just thought, who is this dusty old man talking to? That the way the rage I felt inside, that I'll probably I'll show you like, the videos of how mad I was. And that's what I'm talking about in the working place. If people one thing I will say is if if Wait, tell them again he can't do what? Can't bust G string. <laughs> yeah that old dusty man that's why he was mad at me because he can't bust no g-string but that's not my fault you can't not bust no g-string it's not my fault that you're dropping down on droopy and looking at that it's not my fault you're you're gonna die from old age and amputation and that's what it comes down to and this is my thing as well i must respect these seniors but they can't respect nobody else and that's why you're gonna drop down and die that's why your grandma that's why your mom didn't beat you when you're younger she should have beat you because if she beat you when you're younger you would not talk to you like that you would have respect and that's why a lot of these youngsters and oldsters don't have respect because they get beaten when I was younger. And I should have beat you like how your mum should have beat you when you were, when, at, that, at that time. You get it? That's what it comes down to. Looking like a wrinkly bag of bacon and you're coming and talking to me in type of way. I don't think so. I do not think so. I don't think so. And that's what it is. My thing is, I see red and I said, I don't care who it is. Doesn't matter if he's a senior, he can get beat down. In all fairness, it's not even that. What I'm more angry about is that why are you even here? You should be in the retirement home. You shouldn't even be working this kind of job. You get old, you, you have, you're, you're old. You literally die from backache from doing this kind of job. This is not for you. This is not for you. You're angry at me because you lost the World War back in 1974. Get off of it. Get off of it. Looking back at it, I'm just thinking, who's this dusty old beanbag, run down, jack in the beanstalk looking ass talking to? Who is this Michael, old I'm ass, retired ass? Huh? Man, because he can't bust G string. He's angry because he can't bust G string. You can't even bust A, B, C, D, E, F, G string. Now, like, who are you talking to? Looking like peas in the pod. Rugby Stewie Griffin looking ass. So, as I said, I left the thing there, and these times, my whole thing is, well, the reason why I'm more angry about this as well is because that same day, I had shopping I wanted to do. I would have done it from the early morning, but I said, you know what, cool, when I finish that shift, I will do it after. So you're telling me I've come to be spoken to like that by old-ass leprechaun. I was mad as hell. I was mad as hell. And as, as I've left now, no one, no, no one knew I left. But I left, and not long after, I've made it back home now, and I'm receiving phone calls. So the first guy that called me, I believe, was the guy that gave me the leaflets. And I explained to him what had happened, and I told him what happened. And I said to him, I'm not going to stamp him kind of things. And his main concern was where the tracker was. And I told him, it was on the, the, the road. I'm not going to say the name of the road, but I told him what road it was on. And my whole point is, I don't care. If you lot can't find a truck car, that's down to you lot. He should not spoke to you like that because I wouldn't have left. That's my thing. I'm learning to stand up for myself. Not even stand up for myself. I'm just allowing myself to not be disrespected. Just remove myself from the situation. Because as I said, I could have run up to him and beat his ass. But I said, I'm not going to go to jail. Because I, I, things I can't speak on on this channel because I don't want to get another strike. So that was that. And I don't know. That, he was the first person that called me. He had a lot of people call me. 
another manager called me, not the same one, but another one. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this is now this is now as I've gone to shop because I as I said I went back home, calmed myself down, then I went back out to do my shopping. And she's called me now. Meanwhile, I'm in the store, I'm on the phone to her, and the way she'd come at me already before even asking me, I did not like. So I already knew that me and her was gonna have a problem because she came at me a type of way and I just wasn't gonna have it. And I remember her saying to me things like, you don't care, da 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 da. And I said to her, it's not that I don't care, it's just the fact that I'm not gonna tolerate disrespect from your employees because you hire, is that, if that's the kind of people you guys wanna hire, that's on you. But I'm not gonna have a part of that. I don't need to work there and, and do with that. No, thank you. I've come from jobs in the past that tried to disrespect me and they're lucky they didn't get that ass beat too. So I'm not gonna have that. And just the way she came at me, and even though I'm trying to talk to her on a calm level, and she's come back at me with some snappy attitude, like, you're mad that your, your husband can't bust your G-string, is that what it is? I think everybody's just mad because their G-strings aren't getting bust. That's not my problem. If you don't want your G-string bust, that's not my problem. So maybe that's why she came at me like that. And I had to put her in their place, I'll be so honest with you guys uh, Like I said, I don't usually say anything But in this in this occasion, I had to put her in their place Because it's like, you're not going to come on my phone And disrupt my shopping And hit everybody in Peckham Thinking I'm one of these people No thank you, that's not, gonna, that's not how the run-ins are going to occur So I had to put her in their place And the woman was cheeky She had the nerve to hang up on me Like I come on her phone Like I troubled her I said, nah, she's buying it fam She's actually buying it <laughs> she come at me a time away <laughs> and hang up on me, and I continue my shopping. Every, the whole, the whole of um, Morrison's is looking at me like I'm crazy. I said, let me just continue. And one thing in me, I don't like shopping. I, I, it stresses me out. I don't like doing it. So imagine having that happen to me. I was just ready to just walk out of there. Whether I paid for things or not, I was ready to walk out of there. And I had so much numbers call me that same day, all for this one tracker. Now the same manager that I spoke to earlier had called me and. As I said, even with the situation, he was still the only calm one. We spoke and explained the situation to him because he, when the phone call had occurred, which I wish I'd recorded, he heard him in the background. He couldn't catch what he was saying, but he heard him talking in an aggressive tone. I remember him saying that as well. And I told him the things that he had said to me. And he said, obviously, that's not acceptable. We should spot like that. And in a way, he understands why I retaliated and how I did. And I did take accountability only to him that what I did was wrong. I shouldn't have left Chaka there, but your colleague shouldn't be talking to you like that either. So either what way? Do you know what I'm saying? I told him it wasn't my intention to do that, but that's just how I have to react. I have to react by walking away because what I want to actually do will only make the situation worse. So that's just me taking it in a lighter approach, even though... I don't know why this laptop... Even though it ended badly, but for them, not for me, because I'm still here. <laughs> so, yeah, he's called me, and then I had someone else call me as well. And I think, I believe I'd got in the cab by these times. I've done the half shopping I did. I didn't finish my shopping, because now, now I'm just losing my mind. I've done my shopping. I've got my cab now. I got another phone call. And I've said, and each phone call that I got, I've said... This person's called me, asking me, and I've told them the road, because I knew, the, like I said, I knew the area, and I told them what road it was left on, because I knew what road it was on. But was it the first call, the second call? Whoever it was told me that they already had looked, so he'd come and said the same thing as well, and I told him, there's not much else I can do. Um, I'm not going to lie to you, even the way he came at me, I didn't like as well, because I feel like... The way he came at me seemed a bit threatening because he mentioned things like my having my phone number and address because those are things you give to, if you don't give them to workplaces, they'll be on your CV most likely. And I didn't like how he tried to say that like as if he's going to take me to court or is he going to come to my house or something like that. Like it just, to me, it was just weird and it threw me off a little bit. But then it's like, same time, so if you want to come to my house, you can come to my house. My whole thing is, is either what way, you can't get anything out of me. I did what I did. I shouldn't have done it, but it happened for a reason. I don't take it back. I don't regret it. That's my whole thing. So, in a nutshell, I did say to him, I will, if I have spare time, I will go back to the area and have a look. Do you think I've done that from then until now? Absolutely not. But sometimes you've got to lie to people and tell them things. 
And that's just that. I didn't go. I was never going to go. Why would I go? Your colleagues shouldn't have spoken to me like that. I know I've even done that to begin with. I don't even know why we're being tracked at this point. Now, now it's just like, I don't even care for all this. Once I've done something in that in a type of way, I don't care kind of thing. So that's all happened. It's just ongoing conversations, ongoing phone calls. All I'm thinking to myself is I'm putting everything aside. The only thing I'm thinking is I better still get paid from doing this. Now, that's what we're going to get into. That is what we're going to get into. So, either what way, if you legally work in hours, you, legally, you should still get paid. Whether you walked out, whether you left, any of that, you are still required to get paid for whatever hours you work. If I'm wrong, someone please correct me. But for as far as I know, you are still meant to get paid legally. You don't work for free unless it's voluntary work or unless it's just a scam and you're okay with that. But I was not okay with that and I'm not okay with that. So I remember being told you get paid if if it is, was it every Monday? Is that a Monday or Friday? I have the receipts in the in the um, recording anyway, so I can always go back to it and I'll play it for you guys as well. So all I know is by that time on that day, I was supposed to get paid every two weeks. So I said, okay, let me wait two weeks. And even at that as well, when the manager called me, I remember him saying that, um, I don't know if I'll get paid or not because of that. But I just thought, you lot better pay me because if not, then it's going to be a problem. That's all I thought in my head. Two weeks has come now and I've not received anything. The times was between, was it 12 to 5 or 12 to 8 p.m.? I might be wrong, but as I said, I have it all in a recording. So I can always refer back to it and you guys will hear it anyway for yourselves. Please be aware, on your actual payday, your money can go in any time between the hours of 12 to 8 p.m. And, and we're going to be paying you via a bank transfer. Is that something you're okay with? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Now, um, when you do book in a shift, have a look out for a work text that will always be sent to your phone. Now, the whole point of those work texts is just to give you guys all the information you need for your shifts. So um, your work text will include your manager's name and number, what tube or train station you have to be at, and what time you have to be there. Now, um, please be aware most start times will be at 8 a.m. in the mornings for you guys. Sometimes um, you may be required to start a little bit later than that. Is that something you're lo- all okay with? I don't even forgive myself for doing this to this day, but I did say to myself, if I don't receive this money by this time, then they have no choice but to inform the police. That's how you know I wasn't playing no games. And I don't really fuck with the police. I have no reason to call the police. I've had police called on me. I don't really want to deal with the police because the last time I had involvement with the police, it wasn't very nice. So I don't want to, you know what I'm saying? But if that's what it came down to, that's what I was willing to do. And that's what I was willing to do. Before all that, I tried to call the manager multiple times to ask and um, inquire about this money that I legally should have received multiple times. And, okay, sometimes first couple times I'm going to answer because sometimes the phone don't go through. And my phone, when I call people, it doesn't go through. Even if I've called them, my phone's just weird like that. Don't ask me why. I don't know. But I called a good couple times. A good couple times, Michael, if we're going to start naming names. And didn't answer my calls. So, I gave you multiple chances, you didn't want to take them on, you failed to answer my phone calls, then I'm going to succeed in calling the police, which is what I did. I don't need to call the police, I'm not a snitch, I don't do those things, but I don't play when it comes to money because I've had, I've been robbed quite a few times, and we're going to speak on those times as well, separately. So I said, I'm not going to keep getting robbed, it's, it's not fun, it's not even acceptable the times I have. I called the police, as you've seen in the screenshot at the start of the video. I don't have the recording of the phone call, because I didn't record the phone call. But from what I do remember, um, it's not a matter for the police. Now, I wasn't thinking of any of that. I just thought, I need my money and I need to sort it out, because the, how I want to do with it will only get the police involved anyway. So let me just do it in a more respectful way. However, the police did advise 
me to speak with Citizens Advice, I think they're called, which I try to call them, and they're shit. Citizens Advisors, you're shit, because I called you lot, and every time I called you lot, your land's unavailable, sort it out, you're done out here. You, you should be shut down at that point, because why are you operating phone line and no one can get through to your phone line? What the fuck is that about? Sort your life out. Sort it out. So at that point, I don't even care anymore. I just, you know what, I'm going to call it a loss. Like I said, it's not the first time I've been robbed, so I don't really care anyway. But more of the story, watch watch yourself when it comes to these jobs. Don't just apply for it and think, yeah, it's a job, da 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 Watch it. If there's certain things you feel like are very iffy, get out of there as soon as you can. Because if you don't, you're going to regret it in the end. Trust me. I've learned my lesson with these jobs now, and I'm looking out. If I see even one red flag... I do what I can to dodge and can get out of there. Because the red flags are only going to pop up a lot more when it comes to these jobs. It's like, when you, it's like, for example, when you get in a relationship and your relationship is toxic. If you feel like you're in a toxic relationship and they keep doing these things like red flags, you'd leave, right? So it's the same thing with a job. If you feel the same thing, you leave. And the stupid thing with me is that I don't even know the name of the place I work for. And that's one thing I'm, I will take... I will call myself out for the fact I don't know what these people are even called. They never said that to me on the phone, for, as far as I remember. Otherwise, I would have just looked them up and I would have made a report. Bitch, I would have made a fucking GoFundMe page and all, but more of the story, you can't trust nobody. These job places are weirder and weirder each day. And one thing I will say is if you apply for jobs, do not apply on job today. Just don't. Because you'll end up in the same predicament that I've just had to come out of. Don't do it. Just stick to the shit indeed. Don't don't apply for nowhere else. Especially up today. But yeah, I feel like that covers everything. I don't think I'm missing out anything else. I think we're going to call the story an end here. And as I said, there'll be many more story times I ain't done. There's a lot of more things I can talk on. A lot more things. And we're going to get into it. But on that note... Thank you lot for sitting here and listening to the story. The good, good story, them. Yeah, man. Make sure to like and subscribe. My socials, anyway, my socials be in the description. All that shit. And you know what? Over and out. Thanks on the beat.